Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're all doing well and staying safe as usual. For those who have been on this channel for a while, you know that this video is a very long time coming, and that's how to parry every possible enemy in Dead Cells. About six to seven months ago, I released a two-part guide where part one discussed the different shields and their functions, while part two talked about the art of parrying or parrying in a general sense. In those videos, I said that I would put out a guide soon on how to parry every single enemy, and if soon means six to seven months later, then good for you. But if not, then I'm sorry. And unfortunately for a multitude of reasons, that soon just didn't come. But with the new setup and just all of this new stuff that I have, as well as getting multiple requests, I decided to push through and put this one out for y'all. My hope is that you come away with a better understanding of enemy attack patterns and how to adapt to the variety of enemies in this game. I do need to note a few things before the video starts, however. And the first is that I will not be discussing enemies that cannot be parried. These are the Impaler, Shocker, Masker, Protector, Slammer, Skeleton, Librarian, Sweeper, and Spawner. The way to deal with them is essentially to kill them or dodge before they attack you, so no need in talking about that in the parry video. In addition, I will not be covering two enemies that can be parried, and that's the Dancer and the Royal Guard. Dancer, the issue is that there isn't a reliable parrying mechanic when it comes to her attacks due to the way that she's designed. I've tried many times and I keep getting hit, only getting a successful parry once every 10 attempts. If you have an idea on how to deal with her, I would love to hear from you because I'm stuck right now. For Royal Guards, you can technically parry the dash, but it's pretty much pointless due to the fact that it does no damage, so I won't bother talking about it. The last thing I want to mention is that due to the number of enemies and attacks, I will be rapid firing the vast majority of them in order to save some time. My hope is that you're able to get a better understanding through the commentary and the footage. If you're seeing me for the first time, I like to do a lot of Dead Cells guides, 5BC runs, which are live and post commentary. I do a lot of Skull the Hero Slayer, and will be restarting my Chaos and Chill podcast very soon. I also, on the side, like to occasionally do some social commentary, so if any of that interests you, feel free to hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and let's get started. The only noteworthy thing about bats is that they tend to move around in a bunch of different directions before actually attacking you, but there is a very obvious audio and visual cue that they're about to start running at you. It's just like any other pairing when it comes to any sort of running enemy. So basically hold it up a little bit early and then you should be okay. Buzz cutters are like the bats in which they tend to fly around in all sorts of different directions before actually attacking you. Sometimes you may not be in proper position to parry, but basically when they arch their little wing back, that's when you want to start holding up your shield because that's when they're going to start attacking. Other than that, nothing to note really with buzz cutters. Corpse juices are a little tricky, but in essence what you need to do is as soon as they start to attack, that's when they parry because their attack is really fast. So as soon as you see them start to move a little bit, that's when you hold your shield out. You should be fine. There's two things that you need to keep in mind about defenders. The first thing is that if they're attached to an enemy, say for example like a failed experiment is right next to them, they will never attack you so you don't have to worry about them. The only time they will attack is if they're not defending anybody. And their attack is actually faster than it seems. So right when they cock back to hit you, that's when you want to parry. So usually you parry right as they're about to hit you. In this case, you want to parry during the windup. Jerk shrooms aren't terribly complicated as with most smaller enemies. All you need to do is essentially when they're running towards you, you just hold your shield up right as they're about to collide with you and then you're good to go from there. They only run when you're facing away from them and at a distance. Kamikazes are a little weird and I actually don't suggest parrying them unless you have an AOE shield. So Thunder Shield, Blood Shield, uh, Punishment, things like that. Basically, once they start to turn red and they're about to explode, that's when you want to hold your shield up. The thing is, kamikazes usually come in pairs or multiple at once. So if you have something like a spike shield, then you'll have to try and parry the other ones and that becomes really difficult. So only really try to parry if you have an AOE shield. Living barrels are kind of complicated. So essentially what you need to do, at least with the projectile attack, you'll know if they're about to explode and when they're gonna do the projectile attacks because once they start like expanding, that's the explosion. When they're not expanding, that's when they're doing the projectile. So with the projectile, right when they start making the noise for releasing the projectile so basically right before the projectile that's when you want to hold the shield up as far as the explosion is concerned they'll kind of huff and puff a couple times like the big bad wolf and that's when you want to parry is after they breathe a couple times it's a little hard to explain 
and I this is another enemy I don't really recommend pairing because the timing is so awkward but in essence you kind of want to treat them like kamikazes as far as like pairing at the last second is concerned magistrates are extremely weird and it's kind of the same issue as the banished in which sometimes the pairing works sometimes it doesn't essentially what you need to do is as she shoots the skulls and the skulls come towards you you need to hold your shield out just a little bit before the skulls hit you now sometimes what happens is that the skulls will kind of bounce off of you and then bounce back towards you and then you get hit fortunately you don't take too much damage for them so i would just focus on trying to kill them instead of parrying rancid rats also known as the most annoying enemy in the game they're gonna run around for ages and then they'll finally see you and jump towards you once they start the leap towards you just like the regular zombie hold out your shield you should be good to go from there i would suggest having an aoe shield if you're gonna do that though just because of the fact that there are usually clusters of rats together like maybe three four five all the way up until like eight rats in a row so aoe shields definitely help with this enemy Weaver Worms are actually one of the harder enemies in this game to parry because their timing is extremely different. Think of it as the exact opposite of the corpse juice. So essentially what you're dealing with is an enemy that will open its mouth and close it, but they keep their mouth open for a split second, and that split second is usually what throws players off. So they'll keep their mouth open, I want to say for like a half second, and then they'll close it. After that half second is over, that's when you want to hold your shield out, and then you should be able to get the parry from there. For Arbiters, there's a couple options when it comes to pairing the projectiles. What I personally recommend is being at least on a level playing field so that it becomes pretty easy to parry them. Or you can stand below them but to the side, so like on the bottom left or bottom right, be able to parry them from there. Get the projectile, you can probably jump and parry or something like that. In terms of the bombs, all you need to do is just like any other bomb, just stand right next to it and parry the bomb. Blow gunners will only shoot at you if you're on a level playing field or if you're below and to the left or right. So essentially all you need to do with blow gunners is hold up your shield and then you should be okay. You should be able to parry them just like any other projectile except it's a little bit faster. Only thing I would watch out for is that sometimes blow gunners will shoot you when you're not looking so that can provide some problems. So essentially what you want to do Try to get rid of the other enemies that are on the same platform as you before pair and blow gunners because unless you have a punishment or a blood shield, they can be quite difficult. With bombardiers, you can either jump and parry their bomb or you can just parry their bomb standing on the ground. You can additionally parry the three bombs that are exploding from the main bomb. It's nothing too difficult, but if you do miss the parry, you're likely going to get hit by the bomb. Won't be much damage, but still kind of annoying. Catchers are just like any other projectile enemy. When the projectile comes towards you, you can just go ahead and hit the shield and then send it right back towards them. The parry damage is actually not that much, so I wouldn't really focus on that. I would focus more on trying to get a quick kill. Unless that's the only enemy on the platform, then you can do whatever you want. Casters aren't too difficult, though. Cleavers are more or less like any other projectile enemies. The only thing is, once they start moving their hand forward to throw the axe at you, that's when you want to put your shield out. Other than that, they aren't too challenging. If you do miss the parry though, you will take a lot of damage because Cleaver hits you multiple times during the axe throw. Demons have two attacks, the fireball and the melee. In terms of the fireballs, just your standard sort of projectile attack. Stuff like punishment is really good when it comes to dealing with demons. In terms of the melee attack, it can be weird because the demons tend to not always be in position for a good melee hit, so you may miss the parry. Um, the one thing you want to keep in mind about the fireball is if you have a certain distance from the demon, they will shoot the fireball. If you're right next to the demon, typically they will go for the melee attack, but they always telegraph it. Grenadiers are pretty simple. All you need to do is you can either jump and parry the bomb, you can wait for the bomb to come towards you, stand there, and then parry, or you can wait until the bomb's on the ground and then parry from there. Nothing too difficult. Hammers have two attacks, well, one in reality. As far as bombs are concerned, all you really need to do is like parry the bombs as normal. You're probably not going to be able to get to all the bombs in time, so you can parry maybe one or two and then run out of there. As far as the sewer flies are concerned, they have the same parry timing as the buzz cutters, so not too much beyond that. Infected workers have two attacks. You cannot parry the one where he drops the barrel on you. That one you can't parry. The one that you can parry is when he just throws the barrel at you from a distance. That works like any other parrying of any real projectile. In the case of barrels, it'll make the barrel on your side and then go back and hit your opponent. Inquisitors are pretty standard as far as projectiles are concerned. The only thing is that they can attack you from any distance. 
They can attack you from above, from below, to the side. Generally pretty easy because they are in fact slow. Knife throwers, I would say, are one of the first difficulty curves that you have in this game because they have a multi-turn attack and it can be kind of difficult to parry. Knife throwers are the enemy that teaches you that you are in fact able to have a parry reset. So basically when you parry, you're parrying reset so you can parry multiple times in a row. And that's the case with the knife throwers, just tap your shield button three times right when the projectile comes to you and you should be good to go from there. Pirate captains have two attacks. When you are out of range for the melee attack, it's going to shoot barrels at you. Just project it back to him like you would with any other projectile and you're trying to parry it. As far as the melee, kind of the same as always. When he starts to wind up and he's right above his head, right when he starts to come down, that's when you want to parry and then you should be good to go from there. Scorpions have two attacks. One is their tail whip and the other is a projectile. Projectile, just treat it like any other projectile you would see as it comes towards you right when it's about to hit you. Hold up your shield, you should be good to go. As far as the tail attack, it is a quick one. So once they start gearing up for that attack, that's actually when you want to hold the shield up. So a little bit earlier than normal just because of the speed of the attack, but you should be able to parry it even if you do it a little bit early. Undead archers are like inquisitors in that all they do is shoot a projectile at you. When the projectile is about to hit you, you hold your shield up and then you should be able to parry. Yeaters have not one, not two, not four, not five, but they have three attacks. They will hit you in a, with a melee attack, they'll hit you with a projectile, and they'll throw their kids at you, which is kind of shady to be honest with you. So as far as the throwing the kids is concerned, just standard projectile stuff, except it's a little slow. So they will come at you from an angle, so you'll more than be able to parry it. And more than likely, when you parry it, the Jerk Shroom will actually die, so you'll be okay from there. Or they'll be parried and they'll be at such low health, any attack will kill them. As far as the projectile, they will wind all the way back and then throw the projectile at you. It's a very slow attack again, but it's pretty easy to parry, just a standard projectile. To note, though, that they will do it from cross-platform. If they see you, they will do it. And as far as the melee attack, if you're right next to them, they'll do the melee attack. When she starts to go forward with their attack, after she winds up, she'll go forward. That's when you parry. Yeeters in general don't do a lot of damage, so I wouldn't worry too much about them. In terms of the banish, they have the two attacks, the running attack and the melee attack. The running attack tends to have a little bit of a wonky parrying pattern. Sometimes you can parry, sometimes you're not able to. My advice, you can parry the melee attack if you need to. The running attack, I would actually roll or jump out of the way. But in essence, it should be like a normal pairing for anything that's running or anything that's doing a regular melee attack. Banish are just a little bit weird in that regard. Lacerators are pretty self-explanatory. They seem a little scary, but it's kind of just with any running enemy like Rampagers, Jerk Shrooms, etc. When they're spinning towards you right as they're about to collide with you, that's when you're going to hold up your shield. You can maybe hold it up a little bit before, like maybe a half second before. You should still be okay with pairing them. Just treat them like any running enemy. Rampagers are another one of those enemies that seems extremely scary at first, and to be honest, I'm actually still frightened of them. What, some seven updates later? I think they have the most amount of kills of any other enemy on this list, but anyways, uh, they're a standard kind of running enemy, so when they run towards you, they're gonna start swiping at you. All you really need to do is once they start running with you and about to start hitting you, that's when you wanna hold up your shield for the parry. It's really like any other running enemy like Lacerators or George Shrooms or anything like that. Runners are one of the first enemies in the game you're going to see just by virtue of having to go to promenade on your first playthrough. Uh, they do hit pretty hard, but the thing with pairing them is that when they wind up and then they start to move forward with their sword, that's when you want to hold the shield up. So when they're moving forward with the sword, put your shield up, you should be able to parry them without any issues. Thorny is, again, just like any other running enemy, they're going to barrel towards you right when they're about to collide with you, hold your shield up. But one thing I do need to note is that as soon as you parry, they're going to be facing away from you. So their thorns will be facing towards you. So if you have a melee weapon, make sure that you get on the other side as soon as you parry and then attack them. You don't want to hit them right away, otherwise you're going to be taking some substantial damage. Zombies are the standard enemy of this game. And essentially with the zombies, what you need to do is you parry the leap just like you would a failed experiment, just like you would any leaping enemy. And the melee attack kind of looks like the Purulent Zombies of Graveyard and the Toxic Sewers. They'll kind of wind back as soon as they go forward, that's when you want to parry. Automaton are really tricky because of the fact that they're cloaked. 
if you think it's an automaton it's probably an automaton that's the biggest advice i can give on that end what i would say is try not to do everything at once if they're on a platform with another enemy either go after that enemy or go after the automaton don't try to do everything at once because otherwise you're probably going to get hit in terms of the actual pairing it's like the timekeeper dash try to hold it up a little bit earlier than you may even if you only end up blocking the attack and not pairing it's fine but you don't want to take damage from an automaton hit because they are pretty powerful cannibals have two attacks they have their triple strike and they have the bomb the bomb is just like any other pairing bomb sort of thing you can just use your shield when the bomb approaches you and then you can go from there they will typically use the bomb attack when you are right next to them and they act really scared so they'll throw the bomb and then jump back with the actual attack um cannibals attack tends to be a little bit buggy sometimes so i wouldn't like try to go in between platforms and things like that all you need to do is just like any sort of leaping attack like a zombie or a failed experiment all you really need to do is once they start the wind up that's when you hold the shield and then they'll be able to get parried from there catchers actually have multiple pairing patterns so you can parry the hook and if you get caught by the hook you can parry the melee attack which is the same timing as the regular melee attack that they do and they have a little wind back before they kick just put your shield button out right before they kick you should be fine they seem a little scary because the hook tends to do a lot of damage if you get caught by the hook and then they do the kick but for the most part once you figure out how to parry this enemy it's really not that bad the biggest advice that i can say when it comes to parrying corpulent zombies is don't don't try and parry them the only reason you see me doing it is because i'm doing it for the video other than that i either try to run away from them or put them in a position where i can kill them easily you can parry their little tantrum on the ground you cannot parry their big slam down you cannot parry it don't try and do it it just over complicates things and if you got other enemies to deal with it's just not worth it at the end of the day they are a very powerful enemy if you mess up the timing even on survival you're gonna be taking a lot of damage so definitely do not parry these enemies disgusting worms have a somewhat delayed timing in terms of their melee attack they're gonna open their mouth and once their open mouth is at like its apex that's when you want to hold your shield to be able to parry them as far as the bombs are concerned the five bombs will drop so you can parry some of the bombs generally i would just run away from the situation just to make sure that you don't get hit by a bomb because if you get hit by one you'll probably get hit by a couple others and that can really hurt with the failed experiment the leap is pretty self-explanatory it's pretty much the same timing as it is for the zombie just a bigger enemy in terms of the melee attack i don't really suggest trying to parry all the melee attacks that it does but in case you need to know the first hit's pretty self-explanatory but the next two hits are actually pretty fast and they will come pretty much as soon as that first hit you parry that those next two hits will come and then the final hit is a big slam downwards that is pretty easy once he does the wind up that's when you want to parry and as he slams down then you'll be able to get that parry from there giant tick is an often controversial enemy in terms of its difficulty fortunately it really only has three attacks that you need to parry the first attack is the overhead slam the second attack is a sideward strike and the third which is not pictured here is actually a back kick that will occur from the overhead slam so the overhead slam pretty self-explanatory once she winds up similar to the failed experiment that's when you parry the side swipe is kind of similar when she winds up that's when you hold your button down and that you'll get the parry from there if you roll to the other side as she's doing that big slam downwards then she's probably going to go for that back kick so when she does the down slam and then you're able to roll out of the way onto the other side hold your shield button up you'll be able to parry the back kick from there golems are often thought of as one of the most difficult enemies to deal with in the game the main issue with golems is that you're dealing with other enemies and have to kind of deal with their attacks such as bombardier shooting stuff at you the dancers kind of jumping behind you and doing their thing and then you have a golem just coming in from miles away and trying to beat the crap out of you essentially with the golem if you're able to handle it one-on-one -on -one, all you really need to do don't go attack it right away if you have a shield all you need to do is just let it come towards you it's gonna do a basic kind of dash attack and once it comes towards you just hold up that shield and you should be good to go it's not terribly difficult but if you go and attack it from up close it's gonna do its little down slam thing and that attack you cannot parry it does a lot of damage ground shakers aren't as bad as they seem all you really need to do is as he's gonna wind up to do his little stamp attack hold out your shield 
and then you want to make sure that you hold out your shield pretty quickly after that. It's kind of like knife thrower parries in which, because the second and third hits are pretty fast. The fourth hit, if it even comes to that, the fourth hit isn't that bad. You just need to parry and right as he's about to jump. So not too bad, but if you do get hit, you're going to be taking a lot of damage. So this is another enemy in the category of don't try to parry it, just kill and run away. Guardian Knights have two attacks. The first attack that he's going to do when he sees you for the first time is the spin attack. And essentially when he winds back to do a spin, that's when you want to parry. If he's already spinning by the time you get to him, you can actually just run up to him. And right when you're about like three or four pixels away or like three or four centimeters, however you want to measure that. Right when you're pretty much close to him, you can hold out your shield. You should be able to parry it. As far as the melee attack, it's your standard kind of winding sword type of melee it is a little bit slow so right when the sword starts to come up that's when you want to hold your shield down and you should be able to get the parry from there lancers have two attacks you cannot parry the attack where they're trying to stab you from below or above you can parry the one where they have the three strike combination if you parry one hit you are not going to be dealing with the other two attacks even if something like a frontline shield is being used really all it is is when they wind back again that's when you hold the parry button out and then you should be good to go from there Oven Knights are a little weird to explain. So they have two forms, right? They have the shield form and the shield list form. Shield form, they have two attacks. They're always going to start with that punch. And essentially what you need to do is you need to parry right when they start the wind up. So it's a little bit of an earlier timing than usual because their attack is fast. After that, they're going to go for a big overhead swing. That is a longer parrying time. So right when the sword or axe or whatever they have is right up above their head, and it starts to come down that's when you need to hold the shield down as far as the shield list is concerned what you need to do there is you need to do the same thing you were doing with the overhead attack except a little bit faster but it will attack again regardless of the shield that you hold unless it's like a knockback shield so make sure that you are in position to parry it again Pureland zombies melee attack is the same as the green Pureland zombies which is the same as the regular zombie it takes a little bit of time, so just be very mindful of when they start to move towards you. As far as the electric cage is concerned, you cannot parry the electric cage. You cannot parry the dash either, but when they dash towards you, they're going to try for their melee attack, and you can parry that. Do I suggest it? No, not really. With the green Pureland zombies, essentially the melee attack, which will happen if you're right next to them, usually after they're thrown an egg. Same timing as with the zombie, except the Pureland zombies do a lot more damage. So when they're kind of have their head back and then they come forward, that's when you want to hold your shield out. As far as the eggs, it's just like any other projectile enemy. When you parry the eggs, they turn into biters, which can be helpful or hurtful depending on your preference. Slashers are a very weird pairing type of enemy. So if you have an offensive shield like a frontline or a thunder or a blood shield, they're going to do their three hit combination. If you have like a knockback shield or a punishment, they will not do the three hit combination. So. If you have one of the defensive shields, again like Rampart or Knockback or something, all you need to do is just parry the windup so when they're about to hit you with their sword or whatever they have, hold out the shield, you should be good to go from there. With the three hit combination, what's going to happen is that you're going to parry the first one as normal. They are going to continue their attack, so they have the second hit that goes upwards. So that one is pretty quick, so as soon as you parry the first one, get ready to parry the second one. And the third one, there's a little bit of a delay, so he kind of stutters and then he does that overhand slam. That's when you want to parry, right when he does that little stutter stab. Tentacles attacks depend on a variety of factors. So we'll talk about the close up first. So essentially with the close up, if it's a smaller platform, they'll just shoot straight up at you. If you've already encountered that tentacle, like if they've already tried running at you and then they missed, then you have the chance to be able to parry the shoot up. So when they start shooting up at you, right as they're about to that's when you want to hold a parry this is a situation which the exclamation points are a lot more useful than not as far as when they run at you if it's a long platform and you haven't seen that tentacle yet they most likely will be running at you at that point it's the exact same with conjunctivious as far as the parry timing is concerned but when they're running at you just treat it like any other running enemy right when they're about to collide with you hold the shield up you should be fine but yeah it's the same thing with kanji and an ancient sewers toxic miasma again have two attacks Projectile, same as with any other projectile, you're going to parry it as, well, you would like an Inquisitor. Only difference is that their projectile is actually pretty fast, so you just need to be on guard for that, kind of like blowgunners. 
With their melee attack, they're going to shrink and then expand. As soon as they're done shrinking, that's when you want to hold your shield up because that'll allow you to parry once they start expanding because the expansion part of that attack is actually pretty quick. So it's pretty simple once you figure it out, but it may take a couple tries to initially get that timing down. I definitely have a love-hate relationship with Weirded Warriors. Uh, the thing about them is that they can hit you from pretty far away because they have a giant hitbox. So even if you jump to another platform, if it's on the same level and the Weirded Warrior has already done his strike, he will most likely hit you. And so what you want to do with the pairing, there's a couple ways you can think about this. The one is treat him as like the automaton, just a very fast running enemy that will dash towards you. You can treat it like that. What I like to do, I like to use auditory cues. So he'll yell out like a little yell, he'll like scream, and then he'll do his dash. As soon as he's done with the scream, that's when you hold up your shield and then you should be able to parry him. The timing can sometimes depend on the amount of distance covered, but most likely he will attack you right after he screams and you should be in good enough position to be able to get that parry off. You can, in fact, parry things in challenge rifts, specifically the ball and chain, as well as the little shurikens that shoot out at you. With the ball and chains, make sure that as right when they come towards you, you kind of hold your shield up. You should be able to parry that. As far as the shurikens, just like any projectile in the game, just hold your shield out. You should be good to go. Uh, it's more useful to parry the shurikens when you're in those long stretches where there's like a couple of these shurikens shooting at you and then you have no other way to get out of there outside of parrying them because of the fact that you can't really dodge roll them. So parrying the shurikens is pretty helpful. Ball and chain, very situational, don't usually do it, but there are situations where it may come up. There are three elite abilities that can be parried, and that's the rotating laser, the laser spam, and the line laser. I don't know what exactly it's called, but it's like a little line. So as far as the rotating laser is concerned, when that laser comes right around to you, right before it hits your head, you can hold out your shield. Generally, I don't really parry this one because, you know, the enemy is trying to attack you, and the laser does not do much damage, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. As far as the little turrets that shoot above you, like the laser spam, all you need to do, it's the same concept as with the knife throwers, just keep tapping the parry button, and then honestly, you're going to be able to parry the enemy that you're dealing with anyways, because you keep on parrying, so no issues there. In terms of the line laser, this is kind of the more tricky one, so there's going to be a little faint line that you see across the screen with the enemy. Once you see that line, go for the parry immediately, because the entire line will come right after that. They kind of telegraph it on purpose. So you see the line, it's a little faint. Click your shield button, you should be able to parry the entire ability. And that's gonna wrap it up for me. I am absolutely exhausted because there was so much to put together. So I'm really glad that you guys took time out of your day to watch this. If you wanna watch an amazing 5BC player who specializes in shields and get better through watching, I highly recommend my boy King DKC. It's twitch.tv slash kingdkc. He is one of the best in the world at pairing, so definitely give him a follow. In all honesty, I'm just glad I finally got this one out to you, and I hope, I sincerely hope, that it helps you become a better Dead Cells player. If you like the video and want more guides on Dead Cells, I have a whole playlist of the different guides. You can find them on my channel. I have one on the War Javelin. I have, as I said, the first two parts of the Shield Guide. I have one on the Spartan Sandals as well, so I have a lot of content in that realm. I also do a lot of 5BC runs, which are live and post commentary. If you're into Skull of the Hero Slayer, I do that. And on the side, I do some social commentary. So if you want to follow me on there, you can. If you want to follow me on Twitch, you can follow me at twitch.tv slash asundar. My social media links are in the description as always. And thank you guys so much. I'll see you all later. Have a great night, everybody, and stay safe out there. Looking sideways, but how am I the one to blame when you're distorting pictures? Call my name. Mm -hmm. Looking sideways, but how am I the one to blame when you're distorting pictures?